Good evening, friends. Dick Riculus here, reporting live for WBIGD TV. Today we're going to talk about another product. We're going to have Big D test, prove if it's true, if it's false, if it's right, if it's wrong, if the manufacturer's leading you down a path of destruction, if they're just plain out lying to you, lying to you, lying to you. We are here and we're going to report it because that's what we do. Dick Riculus here, WBIGD TV. All right, friends, it's never a good day when Dick Riculus joins us at the beginning of a video. Today we're going to talk about a PPI amplifier. Back in the 90s, PPI used this absolutely state-of-the-art slang. Actually, they trademarked it. So that's what they use. Absolutely state-of-the-art mobile audio is what they say. And back then, amplifiers were that way. These art series amplifiers, the design, they had uh, all kind of crazy artwork. They had water cooling available as well. And the art was designed by the late Carolyn Hall Young. God rest her soul. But today, we're going to look at this PPI SPL 5K, which is available right now on Amazon. If you check the link in the video description, you can pick one up. Now, when we go to the Precision Power website and click on Amplifiers, we don't see these models. We see Power Class, Atom, Ion, Black Ice, and tracks. So the question begs, where is the SPL series? Now it's rumored this SPL series was designed for Mexico, the Mexican market. So, hmm, interesting why they're sold on Amazon and we can't find them anywhere else. Well, we got one in, we paid 200 bucks for it just to do a test for you guys. You can see it comes with a base knob. It is a plastic encased base knob. They use an RJ11 style connector. It comes with a long cable as well. It comes with a 120 amp fuse, an extra one, and also mounting screws. And then the owner's manual. Here are the ratings on the back. You can see, and also on the box, all over the box, 5,000 watts, Class D mono block amplifier. There's ratings on the box, 1,100 watts at 4 ohms, 1,700 at 2 ohms, 2,500 at 1 ohm. On the Amazon listing, they're listed as RMS power. However, on the box, it does not say RMS power. And I think you guys are pretty certain that that's not the case based on the fuse. Here is the amplifier. Let's take a look at the end. You can see we have RCAs in and outs. We have a protect light, a power light, gain control, variable subsonic from 17 to 50 hertz, variable phase from 0 to 180. And if we switch over to the other side, we can also see that we have a low pass filter, a variable bass boost, a remote connection, then we have the bridge in and out. Yes, you can strap these amplifiers. On the Amazon listing, it does show that these have spade type connectors, but they actually do have four gauge power and ground for the SPL 5K. They must be showing the wrong one on the Amazon listing. Also has a 120 amp fuse and a single output via eight gauge terminals for your subwoofers. So it doesn't allow you to hook up dual voice coil subs very easily since it only has one terminal. Now, you know what we're getting to next, right? That 120 amp fuse. Let's do some big dummy math. 120 amps, 14.4 volts, 1728 watts, 80% efficiency, 1382 watts is what we're looking at. Do not know where they're getting these numbers. This 2500 watts at one ohms is not going to happen with this fuse. Just no way. As far as dimensions go, 12.5 inches by 7.5 inches, and the millimeter equivalents are there as well. And as far as the thickness of the amp is about 2 inches or 51 millimeters. Now some of you may notice the similarity to the audio bank amplifier we tested before. We're going to come back to that. <laughs> so now we got the amp all hooked up using the RCAs and the 4 gauge power connections, 8 gauge for the speaker leads output. Let's fire up the good old SMD to more engineering amplifier dyno. Test out the RMS power output of this amplifier. First up, we're going to try the 4 ohm test. It's rated 1100 watts. And 4 ohms, right. Here we go. 40 hertz. Here we go. Up to 1% THD. And. This is Dick Riculus. D yeah, that's right, friends. 476 watts at 4 ohm certified. Uncertified takes us up to the clipping point. Should get a little bit more power. See if we can get 500 watts. Not quite. 
492. Again, the voltage is kind of high here, 14.52. So we're giving it all the juice that it needs to get as much power as possible. Dynamic sends a 40 hertz pulse tone into the amplifier. Again, we're not even near the half of the rated power. 505 watts, 14.68 volts. As far as efficiency goes, we calculated about 80% efficiency. 4 ohms, 40 hertz, 14.6 volts. 2 ohms rated 1700 watts. We know that's not going to happen. So we'll see what we get. Certified test again takes us up to 1% THD. And here we go, 760 watts. This is not a Mickey Mouse program! I can never understand that. Sanfe, I don't understand it either why they put these ridiculous numbers other than just to take from the customer because they think we don't know any better. Anyway, let's try the uncertified test up to clipping. We did break 800 watts, 811 at 14.34, still not half of that rated power that it shows. Dynamic burst sends that 40 hertz pulse tone into the amp. And we see 881. Voltage is kind of high. You can see 14.62. I don't think the power changes any. So 881, 14.62 volts. Dynamic. Now the efficiency, 2 ohms, 70%, which, you know, it's not great. It's typical though. 1 ohm, 2,500 watts is what it's rated. And you can guess, <laughs> that ain't going to happen, friends. Let's see what we get. Yeah, just barely over a thousand watts. If you go back and look at the uh, audio bank 8K amp dyno test I did, the amp that's similar to this one, it actually got like 1200, almost 1300 watts. So, and that was a lot, like $60 less too. <laughs> Uncertified 1150 watts, 14.1. Again, just expect abysmal results based on the ratings. Again, you know, if they just rated them right, then we wouldn't pick on them so much. But they're trying to pick on the consumer, so I'm going to pick on them. That's how things go. 1336 dynamically. Efficiency at 1 ohm, 61%. You know, class D amps, yeah, ugh, that's not so great. Results absolutely failed like a boss. You can see most of the test here. Pause it if you want to see the numbers. There are some additional tests, 0 0.8, 0 0.67, and 0.5. If you stick around till after the credits, always have some extra features. If you guys will stay tuned, you can see them. Now, what's on the inside? Chinese cookies. What do we mean by that? Well, this amp is a cookie cutter. You know, this is not a unique design. It looks a lot like a whole lot of other amplifiers out there. Kind of picked off the shelf. And I'm going to show you the different amplifier here in just a minute that we tested before the audio bank. And you'll see how close they are in design. Now even the outside, even the box is very similar with these two amps. And also the controls on the outside are, are pretty close to being the same. Now when we take the bottom panel off, you'll notice the audio bank at the bottom has got two transformers. Uh, it's got some different placement for the caps. It also... It uh, doesn't have the riser board like the PPI does on the right side just above the transformer. And that just keeps some of those components off the board. But as far as the design goes, they're very, very similar in how they work. In fact, decided to bring up part of the old video where Sam talked about it. So let's see what Sam has to say about the audio bank. But no, in case you hadn't realized, the sarcasm is strong on this one, and this is one of the most generic bullshit circuit designs you can get, dating way back to the early 2000s and featuring in amp brands such as the Loudest.com, Audio Pipe, Sinus Live, Branson, Bass Face, Vibe, Gravity, etc. You get the picture. So to summarize, these are cheap Chinese Class Ds with underwhelming performance for their size, and you should only consider buying one if it's blown hella cheap and you want to learn how to start fixing car amps. Again, precision power, absolutely state of the mobile audio. You big dummy. All right, now we got that out of the way. Let's see if it bumps, though. Let's get it hooked up to the Savard High Q8s. Find out how it does.
right now we'll talk about the good and bad stuff first up good stuff pushes subwoofers well comes with a bass remote has a variable subsonic filter linkable slash strappable hook multiple of these up to the same speakers and the ppi brand stigma you're a boss if you get a ppi could be better ratings like a boss literally state-of-the-art cookie cutter <laughs> lightweight cheap feel why 5,000 watts? Why 2,500? The Audio Bank 8K gives you more power and it's cheaper. As you can tell, I'm a little salty. The fact that PPI is one of my favorite brands from back in the day and to see them being a cookie cutter amp, Chinese design, Chinese parts, cheap as can be for 2020 just makes me sad. But I appreciate you guys as always for watching, commenting, liking the video, slapping me a thumbs up. Thanks as always to patreon.com slash old school stereo. Special thanks, Stuart, Travis, Jesus, Tomcat, Big D. I'm out of here. All right, as promised, I ran a few extra tests here. We'll show you. First off, is the 0.8 certified test. Again, 40 hertz is the tone. 1156, you can see we actually got less. Uh, or just a little bit more than the one ohm test. I think the one ohm test we got just a little over a thousand. So still not very well, not very good. Dynamically, we did get over 1500 watts though, which was uh, kind of uh, surprising. But there again, not if you look at the audio bank that we tested before, you can see that one actually still did a little bit better than this one. Now at 0.67, we did not try the certified test, but we tried the dynamic just to see what it would do. And yeah, over 1,700 watts. Again, the dynamic test is a very short burst tone into the amplifier. So half an ohm, we tried it, and I'm going to talk you through what happened here in just a second. All right, so the amp went into protect. I'm going to take it off the tripod here so you can see. Red light is protection. So let's uh, cycle it off and back on, make sure it actually comes back on. Power off, power on, should turn blue. There we go, amp is fine. Almost 2000 watts, a so half moon begin, that's dynamic burst.